know someone who idolizes a famous person a little bit too much. For Sophie, her obsession with her favorite celebrity led to something truly terrifying. Sophie loved everything about her favorite celebrity, who for now we'll just call Mindy. She especially loved Mindy's looks. She would buy the same clothes, get the same hairstyle, and buy the same jewelry. She did everything to look exactly like her. So one day, Sophie saw from Mindy's Instagram that she was about to go to this restaurant. So Sophie showed up at that restaurant first and waited until Mindy came. She had wanted to get plastic surgery for a while, and she thought, what better than to get a real-life reference photo for my doctor? Soon, Mindy came and sat down and ordered. Sophie tried to compose herself, but when Sophie saw that Mindy got up to go to the bathroom, she followed. Then she pretended to be someone that Mindy met at an event and probably forgot about, so she wouldn't see like just another fan. Then she leaned in and asked to take a photo together. The next day she walked into her doctor's office with the reference in hand and said, here's exactly what I want to look like, and demanded the face be sewn into hers. Story time about how my stepmom got with my boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 18 and it was my senior year of high school, and my mom and my dad got a divorce whenever I was 11 years old. My dad moved to a whole other state. My sister went with him and then my brother and I stayed with my mom because my mom said it was a time where we need our mom in our lives. But to be honest, I think she just wanted child support. Anyways, after elementary school, I moved back in with my dad. And at the time, he was dating this woman who we we're going to call Carol. And she was like the sweetest girl I'd ever met. I actually called her mom even though they weren't married because I was so close to her. So fast forward, they get married. I'm super happy for them. My senior year of high school, I start dating this guy named Paul. Well, since I was close with Carol, I told her about him first. After a while of him and I dating, she suggested that he should come over for dinner. So I ended up inviting him to this party that my dad hosts every year. And I was super excited. Well, I see him and Carol talking. And I'm super happy because I want him to get along with my family. Like for part two. I was recently reminded of the fact that I accidentally rigged my junior year homecoming king vote. <laughs> American schools, we have dances and then we vote for someone in that grade to become the king and queen of the dance. And I I don't know why. So in English. And they just give us slips of paper that says like, write down who you want in your grade of king and queen. So I'm sitting there like not caring about this at all. And so I say out loud, who would hate this the most? So I look to my left and next it's Josh. And Josh hates everything and everyone. And so I say out loud, Josh would hate this. And he makes the fatal mistake of saying, you better not. <laughs> and then everyone's like, that's a great idea. And they put Josh's name down. <laughs> so a week later, they do morning announcements and the English class freaks out because Josh won. And everyone else in every other class is like, how? <laughs> I don't think he ever This is why you should always pay attention to details. A woman was brushing her hair when she found a little bump at the back of her head. So she called her husband to have him check it out for her. He said it looks like a button. It's small, round, hairless, and flat at the top. He joked around it with her, asking, what do you think would happen if I pressed it? Then he did, and the woman instantly leaned up and gave him a kiss. Then the husband kept pressing it as a joke, but something went wrong. It seemed like he pressed it all too many times, and a cool numbness spread down the woman's neck, around her arms and her legs. Her eyes automatically shut, and her vision vision went black. A while later, the woman woke up and learned that she had fainted. The husband kept apologizing with tears in his eyes as if it was all his fault. Eventually, they both went about their lives and tried to forget about this incident, but the woman just couldn't. Because afterwards, she came across a photo of her family in the living room. It was a photo of her and her husband's wedding propped up on a ceramic urn. She looked closer at the photo of her own face. She's smiling as if she's the happiest girl in the world. But there's a small scar under her left eyebrow. A scar that she- Story time on how my boyfriend tried to do the nasty with my dog okay so boom we about to jump right in so i had a really good boyfriend and every day after school he came over to my place both my parents worked till late so we had a lot of time to just have fun so my dog was a big white samoyed and he was obsessed with her this was kind of a red flag but i ignored it because i mean it's a dog we dated for two months and things just kept getting weird second red flag he paid less and less attention to me when he was over and more to my dog so one day while he ignored me and played with my dog again i got a phone call from my teacher my teacher told me that i had to go to school right this second i was really confused but i obviously still went even though it was a saturday it ended up being a prank but whatever just push that to the side for now i trusted my boyfriend with my dog and to stay home alone and i went to the school and this was a big mistake because my boyfriend did the unthinkable like for time i was ringing up a dad and son and the first thing i noticed about them is they were both wearing t-shirts with fish on them so i knew they were probably used to catching shit and i was definitely not about to let them catch an attitude 
So the dad stopped me as I was ringing things up and he said, whoa, 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 that's supposed to be on sale. And I was like, oh, okay, just let me rescan it. And so I rescanned it and the price was just like my weight. It just wasn't getting any lower. So I looked at him and I was like, this price is stagnant. And he was like, okay, we'll get someone else over here. So my coworker came over and she scanned the item and manually entered the item number and the price just wasn't moving. And then the dad decided to elbow the son and go, ha ha, how many women does it take to scan an item? And then he elbowed him again and decided to repeat the joke. And I was just sitting there like, dang, you about to bruise his ribs. So then the dad took us to where he saw the sale sign and lo and behold, there was a sale sign, but it was for a completely different product. So I looked at him and I said, see, this sign is actually for a different product as you can see printed on here. And then I elbowed my coworker and said, haha, how many men does it take to read a sign? I woke up this morning and felt like my skin needed a workout. So I decided to grab my beer by Foreo Sweden. I love my beer as it works out my skin so I don't have to. The beer is app connected so it's super easy to control. Before using my beer, I prep my skin using the Serum 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 by Foreo Sweden. Then I go in with my beer. The beer sculpts and contours the face, which I love as it makes it easier when applying makeup. The beer has a toning microcurrent technology that tightens and firms the skin. This means it will keep you looking younger for longer. The beer is a facial workout as it uses gentle T-sonic pulsations to massage the face, brighten the complexion and give you that youthful glow. And this is my skin straight after using the beer. It already looks a lot more sculpted. You need to grab a beer by Fario Sweet. By the way, if you'd really like to know, he went that way. Who did? The white rabbit. He did? He did what? Uh, went that way. Who did? The white rabbit. What rabbit? But didn't you just say, I mean, oh dear. Can you stand on your head? <coughs> However, if I were looking for a white rabbit, I'd ask the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter? No, no, I, I, I don't... Or there's the March Hare in that direction. Uh, thank you. I think I shall visit him. Of course. He's mad, too. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. <laughs> This is why you should never spread rumors. Once there was a girl called Grace who always wore a hat to school. Even in the summer, she always had a knitted black beanie pulled down to her eyes. Soon, the rumors started around school. Some people said she must have ball patches or have another medical condition that the students didn't know about. Either way, she was constantly bullied for always wearing that hat. One day, Grace's class had a new teacher whose eyes immediately fell on Grace. She said, no hats in class. Grace's eyes widened and she went pale. Well, what are you waiting for? Take it off. Grace replied, I can't. The teacher grew angry, reached over, grabbed the hat, and yanked it off of Grace's head. The room fell silent, then screams, vomit, terror, and chaos. The back of Grace's head was blown open. Bits of skull caved into her head. A small matching hole sat on her forehead near her hairline. Grace then stood up and ran out of the room, sobbing. That was the last anyone has ever seen of Grace. A couple years passed and people stopped talking about it as much until a new kid joined their class, a kid who always wears a scarf. Story time on how I read my little sister's diary and found her fantasizing about me. Okay, so boom, jumping right in. My little sister and I have a great relationship. I'm her big sister and I protect her from all her bullies and always have her back in any situation. My little sister is 13 and I'm 18. But one thing about my sister is she gonna write in her diary. Literally, she's obsessed with jotting down every single thing that happens in her life. Well, recently, my sister has been acting a bit different. She's just been so distant, and I feel like she's been pushing me away. Me being a worried big sister, I asked her if she's having trouble at school, but she told me she's fine and closed the door on me. So, since she wasn't telling me anything, I waited until she went to volleyball practice and snuck into her room. I took her diary, and I know I shouldn't do it, but I couldn't help it because I really felt like my sister was having trouble at school. But what I found in that diary diary changed our sister relationship change for the worse like for part two what the hell are you i am venom and you are mine you bit somebody's head off fuel in the tank listen carefully Eddie. you did not find us we found you think of yourself as my ride where are you going we need Carlton Drake's rocket. You remember him. 
How do you even know about that? I know everything, Eddie. You do? Everything about you. How? I am inside your head. You are a loser, Eddie. But